Welcome to HTML5 webinar series from jpassion.com. Today's topic is cross-domain messaging, topic number nine. So let's get started with presentation. The topics we are going to cover in this presentation is the following, single origin policy. So we will look into the concept of single origin policy. And then we will see how cross-domain messaging could be done in HTML5. And then we will see the concept, we'll learn the concept of uh, cross-origin resource sharing. It's a W3C, W3C standard and uh, HTML. Uh, XML HTTP request version 2 that is introduced in HTML5. So let's learn what single origin policy is all about. Single origin policy is basically it does not allow JavaScript code loaded from one origin accessing or communicating with documents from another origin. We'll learn the concept of origin in the following slide. Okay. So basically, documents retrieved from distinct origins are isolated from each other, meaning they cannot communicate each other. Now, JavaScript codes are considered from the same origin if they are loaded from the sites that have the same uh, the uh, uh, protocol, host, and port. So all these three things should match if they are considered to be from the same origin. So protocol could include HTTP, HTTPS. So HTTPS is different protocol from HTTP and of course uh, WebSocket, WS and WSS. So all these four uh, different protocols are considered uh, different, meaning uh, the, if they have a different protocol, that means they are considered from different origin. And of course, host and port number also play the role in terms of whether they are from, for determining whether they are from the same origin or not. Again, we'll see examples of that in a few minutes. So this same origin policy is imposed by browsers. Okay, so let's see same origin policy examples. Suppose if you have a JavaScript code loaded from store.company.com and uh, the code is in dir page.html. Now, this page can access the following two. For example, dir to other.html, dir inner another HTML. Because they are considered from same protocol, same origin. So you see, they use the same port, uh, protocol, HTTP, right? Uh, and they use the same host, store.company.com. And they use the same port number, the default port number. Okay, But in terms of different directories of the file, they are considered from same origin, so they should be able to uh, access each other. However, it cannot access these three documents. So the first one is HTTPS, and you know the rest of them, uh, rest of the URL is the same, but it's considered as a different protocol because HTTPS is considered from different protocol from HTTP. The second one is using port number 81, so it's considered from a different origin because it uses a different port number. Third is a different host, so obviously is considered as a different origin. So why single origin policy is actually imposed by uh, browser in the first place is basically to prevent cross-site scripting security risk, okay, which is called the XSS. So in XSS, basically attackers inject client-side mal malicious script into web pages. So when that web page is accessed by another browser, uh, another users, other users, the other users will download those malicious JavaScript code and get executed in their own machines. So this is basically uh, how cross-site scripting uh, security problem works underneath. So what is the downside of single origin policy? So single origin policy makes it hard to do mashup application, meaning you know it's rather difficult to mash up different uh, source resources from a different origins in your application because it does not allow XML HTTP request object from accessing documents from different origin. 
So if you want to actually provide, if you want to access like a JavaScript code or documents from different uh, services, service providers, for example, like a Flickr, Google, Yahoo, and uh, you know, it's rather difficult to use those services. Okay, so this single origin policy security model is actually introduced from the beginning, uh, Netscape Navigator 2.0. And, you know, as I said before, as I said in this slide, it's becoming a hindrance of writing which client application because it does not allow you to access uh, the uh, documents uh, from a different origins. So there have been some workarounds. Uh, these workarounds obviously are not the most desirable solutions, however. Uh, one workaround is the client asks the server to access the documents on behalf of it. Okay, uh, obviously this is not efficient. Okay, because uh, instead of actually going to the server directly, uh, service provider directly has to go to the, its own server, as uh, and its own server has to actually get the data for the client. Another workaround is called the JSON P. Uh, it's a JSON with a padding and uh, this is obviously is a hack as well, so it's not really desirable either. So these are the workarounds. All right, so what are the issues of this single reason policy uh, when you are working with HTML5? So these are the things that HTML5 in fact addresses. Okay, so issue number one. A document running on window A or frame A cannot access document running in different window or different frame. Okay, uh, So this issue is again to prevent cross-site scripting problem and this is resolved through cross-domain messaging in HTML5. Okay, So that's something that we're going to actually learn in a few minutes. Issue number two, a document loaded from origin A cannot access service running in origin B through traditional XHR, XML HTTP request version 1. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't allow, uh, it doesn't actually use what is called the cross-origin resource sharing. So HTML5 enabled browsers take advantage of this cross-origin resource sharing standard that was introduced in, by H, uh, W3C. And when it generates XML HTTP requests, it actually generates HTTP requests that is enabled with this course, uh, cross-origin resource sharing. Okay? So it's actually sometimes called XHR version 2. All right, so let's talk about these two in more detail in the following slide. So cross-domain mess cross messaging. So what is and why cross-domain messaging? So again, uh, before cross-domain messaging is available in HTML5, communications between iframes and windows and tabs are disabled by browsers. Again, this is to prevent cross-site scripting problem. Okay. Now in HTML5, cross-domain messaging capability uh, enables secure cross-domain messaging across iframes, windows, and tabs, regardless of the origins of the documents they are loaded from. Right? So they are going to send and receive messages from each other, even though they are from a different origins. So let's see an example. Suppose you have an iframe. Okay, so that iframe, I'm sorry, suppose you have uh, the uh, hosting window and then hosting window has an iframe and they are loaded from a different origin. So this page is the uh, parent page. This parent page is loaded from this origin, abc.domain.one.com. Okay, now in this uh, window, it's going to load an iframe and this iframe is loaded from a different domain. So here is uh, diff domain two. Okay. So this parent page and this iframe, pa iframe inside this the page, host page, uh, they are loaded from a different domain. Okay. Now by using a post message uh, introduced in uh, the uh, the HTML5, they can communicate each other. Okay. So here, if you take a look at this code, first in this host page, it get a reference of iframe. So here, this is the uh, you know iframe reference. So it's basically using get element by ID and iframe ID here and uh, in order to send a message to that iframe which is loaded from a different uh, origin uh, it's going to use post message it's basically for that iframe object it calls the post message method and then this is the message content and it also has to specify target origin in this case where it is actually sending the message to okay so when this call is made 
uh, the, the source, the, the message will actually contain source origin, which is basically this page. And that source origin is going to be constructed by the browser and so sent along with the target or send along with the message to the target origin. So this is how the parent page is going to send the message to iframe it contains. Okay. All right. Now, receiving a message works exactly. Receiving a message is basically event handler. Okay. So in both cases, the receiver, uh, the, the, in both parent page and uh, iframe, will actually use uh, the, uh, the on message event handler. So it's basically, in this case, we are associating this event handler, function event handler, as on message event handler. So when there is a message is received, uh, this event handler will be invoked. So in this event handler, it is highly recommended you check whether the origin that was actually sent, you know, the uh, this source origin in this case, source origin is in fact the uh, the, uh, um, the 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 origin that it wants to uh, the communicate with. So if it is not, disregard the message. Don't take it. If it is the origin that it trusts, then you know it can actually access the data. In this case, the data can be accessed by you know the event that data property. Okay. So both the caller, uh, the, the parent, and in this case iframe, will in, in implement like on message event handler. Okay. Uh, so this event handler receive event. This contains the data and origin and source properties. So this origin is something that the receiver has to check whether it is the origin uh, that it trusts. Okay. So you need to check the origin to make sure the message is from the trusted origin or origins. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's do exercise one. <clears throat> so we are going to simulate different origin by running uh, the HTTP server on different ports. So for default, uh, Python HTTP server is running the uh, port number 8000. Okay, and then we are going to run another uh, the HTTP server on 8001. Okay, so we are going to load the parent page from 8000 and the iframe from 8001. So we are basically loading those two, uh, you know, the uh, in from a different origin. So we are basically simulating it. So let's try to. Okay. Uh, H5. Uh, not media messaging. Okay, so uh, this is the hands-on lab, uh, the uh, directory, and uh, we are going to start. Uh, the uh, default is Python minus M. Yeah, so we, we have Python is, Python Windows version is uh, the provided. Python dash and uh, HTTP server, minus M HTTP server. So as a default, it's starting on 8,000. Okay. So 8,000, and then we are going to create another HTTP server. This time, we are going to start uh, the HTTP server on different port. Okay. So here, Python HTTP server, and uh, we just specify the port number 8001. Okay, so we have a two uh, web server on two different ports. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at the code. So let's run this code first, okay? And uh, you know, then we'll uh, the uh, we'll take a look at the code. In this code, basically, when I click this one. Okay, so we have, uh, this is a parent page. Parent page is in yellow colored, and the iframe, it contains in gray color, okay? And uh, they are going to send messages back and forth, okay? So let's try that. So I'm gonna just click this guy. All right, now, if I click this button in iframe, okay? So this iframe will send a message to parent. So this parent is loaded from 8,000. And uh, this uh, iframe is loaded from 8001, as we have seen in our the uh, presentation slide. Now, if I click this one, 
the iframe will send a message to the parent. Uh, the information that it's going to send is the, uh, the size of itself so that the uh, parent can actually adjust the size of the iframe as well as a message. So it will actually, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the parent will actually display the message. So let me just click this guy. So this is the message from iframe. Okay. And uh, the parent also sent a message to this, uh, this iframe. So that's the message. Uh, j, j, j patient.com okay so let's take a look at the code so this is the uh, the parent page so when I run this you know when I when I click this page this is a parent page post message underscore parent page so parent page uh, in you know the loaded iframe from 8001 Okay, so that is you know post message iframe HTML5 okay so let's take a look at the uh, uh, iframe uh, the code first so in iframe uh, what we did was you know it's actually color gray and uh, now we basically the associate event handler with a click so when the uh, send height uh, the uh, you know that send height uh, this button when the button is clicked we are calling this uh, uh, the function this function is basically sending a message to parent Okay, so it does call the window that parent and post message, and it's basically sending the height information of itself, and also sending the greeting message. Okay, so this is the uh, the uh, JSON format object. So we are sending two information: greeting text message and new height information, and it also specifies the target origin. So where it is actually sending the message to? So that target origin is this, right? Eight thousand, which is uh, import number eight thousand, which is a parent. Okay. So when this message is sent, this is a parent uh, event handler. So parent event handler associated on message event handler with this function. So on this function, basically what it does is it check whether it is the origin message is from the target origin that is actually uh, the, uh, the uh, um, you know, trusting. So that target origin is 8001. So if it is not the target origin, then it will just say, you know, it's not a valid origin. Uh, if it is the, uh, the origin it trusts, then basically it's going to uh, adjust the height of the iframe and then uh, it's just display the message. Okay, so that's how, you know, that we actually get this message. Okay, so this is a message from iframe, right? And then it's sending a response. So it sends this message. Okay, so it's actually, call, it is calling post message on the iframe. And uh, this is the uh, the message is sending to the iframe. Hello, jpassion.com. Again, in this case, target origin is is on iframe. Okay. Uh, so when the uh, the uh, uh, the parent send a message, this uh, hello passion hello jpassion.com, then again it has its own event listener, which is associated with own event message uh, own message event handler, and this is the uh, uh, the event handler. So basically, again, it checks itself whether the message is from a trusted origin, origin or not. If it is trusted origin, then it will just display the message. Okay. All right. So that's the cross-domain messaging. Let's move on to the next exercise, next topic: uh, cross-origin resource and sharing. So cores and H X H R two. So what is cores? So cores is again W three C standard uh, that defines how browser and server uh, communicate when accessing sources uh, across origin. So it is being supported by all uh, modern browsers. Okay. So how does it work? So basically, course uh, the way things work on the course is that the uh, you know the client will send a custom HTTP header indicating uh, its origin information. Okay. And when the server receives that request that contains that uh, client request course uh, the header it will determine whether it wants to allow the message allow the uh, data or not okay and th then it will send back the uh, response message indicating uh, its uh, indication whether it wants to ask it wants to allow the client to access the data or not and by looking at the uh, the response message from the server the browser will actually determine to allow the access or not okay so that's how the course work and we'll actually see the exchange in a few seconds 
so this is used when the server does not require cookie or session based authentication to expose data for universal access. So for example, like a Flickr, Yahoo, Google, you know, they have all kinds of services. Uh, they are actually based on cores. So, you know, they can allow their services to be accessible to browsers uh, that actually send this cores header data. Okay. All right, so let's see what gets, uh, so 